Hi, Johnson. How are you? I'm really good, Andy. You? I'm doing well. And guess where I am today? I have no idea. Do you, Surprise <laughs> me. Do you recognize this place? You know, it's that, amazing. that place does look a little familiar. It, it yeah, actually it reminds me of my house. It does. It does. <laughs> it, I think it might be your house. <laughs> no, it's amazing. Uh, I think uh, we're talking from, I'm talking from Slovenia, you in London. Yes. And uh, we've been spending some time here um, in, in, in your place in Slovenia. It's been amazing. And for us to just rest, but doing a lot of outdoor activities, it's, it's, it's an amazing country. I'm telling you, Slovenia is like we are in love. We might have to come and buy a, a property here or something. Um, you, you know, and, you and, know, part, part of Narnia, the second uh, movie of, of The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe was, was filmed in that valley where you're at. No, I didn't know that. But I, yeah. I, I dri driving, driving down there, I saw like a Nernia apartment or something like that. And I realized, okay, so this guy might like Nernia, but now I know why. Yeah, yes. No, that's, the, yeah, no, absolutely fantastic, this uh, country. But it's, it's a hidden gem. I mean, there's not a lot of tourism. And thank God. I mean, please don't come to Slovenia. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's leave it, let's leave it yeah. like that. Don't like, tell like, anybody. Keep, guys, keep going whatever to Spain, Italy, France, uh, or Brazil, whatever. Um, yeah. No, it's absolutely amazing. So we're having a great time here. It's a bit, it's raining today, but it's been, the weather's been fantastic. Uh, and uh, we have had a lot of time to do outdoor activity, but I'll, I'm having a lot of time to go through the content for our community. We are making some good changes. Uh, we have our team working with new content for the Instagram, LinkedIn, and also we have more uh, recorded sessions for, for the podcast. So exciting. Um, and now today we are coming to an end. Close. I mean, we're closing now a resilient series that we started. Yep. Um, and today we're going to be talking about resilient and career or resilient and workplace and I think it's with the COVID, we were just talking before we start recording, we're just talking, going through a number of documentations that we have here. Uh, well, the future of work was changing even before COVID. So, so this changing a lot, but the question is that why now it's so vital or paramount to build resilience for your career or for your future work develop, uh, you know, development? Or career development. Why? Why do you think so? That, uh, let's start with this question. Let's start looking at this question. That's why really, now, really more than question. ever, it's important to you to build resilience for the workplace and career, etc. Well, it, it is exactly like you say. You you have to, you know, a number of documents that have um, predated COVID, and it for the last 10, 15 years, it's been pointing in a direction. Mm -hmm. where everything is shifting fast and it, it's like the last 18 months it, it's 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 taken a 90 degree turn but it's 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 turned 90 degrees but it's going mm -hmm. even faster it mm -hmm. the, the the speed at which we we've we've turned this corner is is massive so mm -hmm. that i think everything we know is is changing um whether you want to or not, you know, it, you have actually have no choice. So I think it's it's more important now than it has ever been in the past. Because mm -hmm. if you don't if you don't grab hold of, of this in terms of career changes, etc., you're you're likely to get left behind. Well, there was a, something I was working on uh, probably two three years ago on terms of skills gap. And a lot of disillusion, a lot, a lot of disillusionment already in people leaving universities and not being able to work in the place or, or in the career of their choice. So that was happened before COVID. I mean, I was causing a lot of even worries and from a little depression to massive mental illness and mental health issues. And I think, COVID has accentuated that. So more than ever, people, those people like watching us or listening to us, our community, how do we build resilience for 
uh, um, my for you know to my career, workplace, employability, uh, future career development, etc. That is a very key. So there are some numbers here from the U.S. So it says that in May 2020, aggregate employment remained 7.3 million jobs below its pre-recession level. So it doesn't uh, it doesn't look that it changed much. But mm -hmm. if you look at what the future of jobs report uh, for the World Economic Forum, I've got a here uh, from the Economic Forum, the global risk reports show a very interesting picture of youth disillusionment uh, will increase mm -hmm. and uh, digital inequality, economic stagnation, human-made environmental damage, erosion of social cohesion, and terrorist attacks. I mean, this is very, very, very it's a grain picture of how the world is going to be like. I mean, from the guys from the World Economic Forum, it doesn't look like nice. And also very interesting read, they got these pandemials, youth in an age of lost opportunity. So I think it's, it, it's from the, the World Economic Forum. You can't get more mainstream than that. Uh, we're not making it up. So with all those numbers flying around and a lot of changes, you know, in terms of technology and employability, he says he has 75% of employees have expectation that the traditional way of working for a company will change after COVID-19. While 58% wish to work remotely, an impressive 75% of employees have aspirations that the future of work will be a fusion of remote, remote work and office. So this is, this is just, a I mean, whatever we say here, we could spend hours on end just talking about this, yep. right? An important thing for this episode is to really focus on what can one do so first of all what do you think the effect of covid has been we talked about a little bit have you spoken to someone have you read something recently can you talk a little bit to us about that yeah so i, I it's something i think we have chatted before on this and as i speak to people who are um working in the city at present they they, they understand the, the idea of hybrid working, there's, there's some people who would be saying, well, you know, the, the bank in which I'm working for, um, they, they would like me to, to be there one day per week. The, the rest, I can be at home. The rest are, um, are remote. And the other, the other thing attached to that is, is that nowadays, um, remote working, doesn't actually mean being at home either. So, if if you're you so you're you're in Slovenia, you're you are remotely working. So mm -hmm. I, I could be uh, in in Turkey, remotely working, wherever wherever it is. So that the, the sense of not only remote working, but nomadic remote working mm -hmm. now Dig like starts, like di digital nomads, right? Exactly. Yes. So digital nomadism has, has been a trend um, for a number of years as well. And so and this all of this the, the length, the length of, of, of work, the length in which people stay in any particular job has reduced drastically also. Right. Yep. 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 I've, I've got I've got the, um, I've got some stats here. We, I, I've given a lecture a few, uh, I think it was in 2019, towards the end of 2019. So those numbers are not so bad. But it says here 67% of millennials are looking for a new job and 91% plan to stay in their current job for less than three years. Yeah. How can you plan for, for growing your, your business, for example, when you know that most people will be moving around, not only in terms of working remotely, but also want to move that job in, in less than three years time. Yes, so you're talking about it from the employer's perspective. Now I'm talking about for the employers, for managers, for those yep. line, not only employers, but line managers, uh, those building the teams. That create uncertainty, that uncertainty creates some sort of anxiety also. And if yep. leaders and managers are anxious about their team, it, it affects their performance and also affects the, the relationship within those teams. And then affect the psychology and the psyche of the people working in the organization. This is the environment where resilience is so key. Yes, exactly. So it's, it's not a one-way street in terms of me 
looking to advance my career. It's about the whole ecosystem being shifted now. That is a very key word. The whole ecosystem, the whole ecosystem is shifting. It's shifting. And so to just to, to touch on that briefly, it, it's, it's being able to hold everything lightly. So if, if I've hired you to do, to do a project um, and where we've been in the last few years, where companies have, have looked to divest themselves of employees, mainly because they're trying to get rid of, of the, the liability of, of pensions. So big companies like BT or, or, or the telecommunications or, or Rolls-Royce, whole sectors of, of companies are looking to see how can we get rid of the fact that we would have to, to, to find millions of pounds to, to pay pensions when they happen. So they started the ball rolling by saying, okay, instead of having full-time people who are, who've got a label that says we are employed by BT, we're now looking at contractors. So in some ways, the, the employers have started that ball going. And now it's like the ball is starting to move faster, like you say, where we are now seeing as employers that nobody's staying with us for that length of time. Mm, no, very interesting. So that is the that is the picture. It doesn't look so, um, let's say, bright. Uh, but I'm I'm a I'm a very positive person that we can we can turn things around. But the key question is how do we maintain career resilience and sanity? <laughs> <laughs> in in such a, a, a you know let's say in, in the turmoil in transitioning uh and, and and you also like i mean let's just pause for a moment you you did a bit of a work in transition coach right yes yeah you could me, talk a little bit about that transition and career resilience so um yeah, okay let me just back up a minute because i, I don't want to lose the train of thought that I, that I had, uh, I don't have many good trains of thought. So let's, whenever let's, I jump, get on that, one, I, let's jump on that train, mate. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in terms of the, the employer's side of it and, and that, that big piece that's going on, they've actually gone through a hybrid change as well. So there are two models in there. One of which is the operational side of a business, the continuing, you know, we started in, in 1980. Five, where will we be in 19, you know, in, in 2030, say? And so there's a group of people that they have kept as a core. So there's a core piece of, of, of any operation that is moving with the company. And then they've got this separate piece, which is project um, directed. So the projects are. Uh, are outsourced, but the core is kept in house. So it's like if if you have a hundred people working for you, we have a, a, a core of, of 20. The rest we we get in as and when we need them. And so it's that flexibility, but it's also stability. Mm -hmm. And so yes, that's it's very important, isn't it? Flexibility. It's really important. And so stability with flexibility with stability, very important. And this is why if, if I flip the equation again and looking at it from, from the person who is on the other side, they, they have as well in terms of, like I've seen it with people who, who do the nomadic sort of lifestyle. They, they'd say, okay, let's say you're a website designer. Um, and Momentum is looking for somebody to, to be their, their website designer. Okay, so I do a project for them. I set up their, their website and I say goodbye. The other side of it is if somebody is saying, Momentum are looking for an ongoing relationship to maintain and improve and, and future-proof and all this sort of stuff, their website. So that with that mindset, somebody would come along and say, well, yeah, 
I've worked for you in the past. I've done one, two, three, four. Can we now cement our relationship to have a more, uh, a longer lasting relationship rather than a two month or three month or six month? So the length of time goes up in terms of how long we're working for, but I'm still only going to give you 5% of my, my working time. In other words, if there are 40 hours in the week, you can have four hours of the week. So it's, it's that way the mindset is shifting. And I think um, that that's a big part of it is, is how you shift your mindset. In the world. It's, it's part of this world. Um, it's a worldwide major paradigm shift. Yeah. And that, there's a very good article from uh, Ray, da Ray Dalio, you know, it says the world has gone mad and system is broken. So everything is changing right now. Everything we, we are, we're sailing through uncharted waters in every area of life. You know, we yeah. don't know who, to tr who, to, who do we trust, what's going to happen. We don't know the information, misinformation, you know, a lot happening in the world. And, uh, and we are changing faster than I think the system around us has the ability to, you know, talking about now work in terms of five days to four days. So many countries are shifting from five to four. Uh, some companies are giving one or two days for people to go out and do some volunteer work. So there's a lot happening right now. Yeah. How do we maintain career resilience? Okay. Well, like I said, the, the number one thing in this is, is to keep hold of, of the, the concept of lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. If it, it's been important in the past, as you know, you, if you've been working in whatever area, so when I used to do um, my, my job in, in terms of medicine, every, every three months you'd go and do a course on something. Every, every um, six months you'd, you'd, you'd find an international conference to go to. You'd be looking at workshops. You'd be seeing what's happening in, in new techniques or technologies that are coming along. People were saying then, yeah, you've got to keep your skills sharp. And that's not change. Because number one is, is keeping your skills sharp, the current skills. And that is, that is I think, the, the first thing to, to say, that in terms of career resilience, the more that your skills are up to date, the more you will remain in demand. So there is never a finish line right is, you, no. you, that finish line keeps pushing keeps moving forward and you keep you know you keep going and I, I think it's it's very easy to see even retirement has changed the notion of retirement has changed where people learn new skills and come back and start working something new even post retirement big time that has changed for sure so that has changed where does networking fit into this and how has it changed so i guess I mean, I could flip that question on its head. So you, you're, the, you're the, the marketing guy. So how has it changed for you, that the idea of networking? Well, um, earlier on, when we're talking about the kids these days, or most of my students, for example, for them to keep up with, let's say, the, all these changes. And first of all, we, we are all in the media business these days. We are publishing houses now, right? The idea of having a media company out there is it's it's outdated because we we have to keep publishing right networking is about who you connect with mostly online different channels you know my, people might be applying for jobs on tiktok these days and in the past you would get growing up we will go and buy the newspaper and find out the cl classified and see which jobs were there and we call or show up but th these days are over networking also in terms of business networking. So uh, networking with a purpose, networking, knowing where your audience are, uh, what do you want to say, understanding the psychology of each space, right? You know, you're not going to post uh, on LinkedIn a picture that you post on your Tinder and vice versa, perhaps. You know, you know, in the psychology, each platform, depending on the type of network that you want to develop, professional, personal, intimate 
relational, you have to understand that the world has changed and networking has changed and is moving probably faster than our ability to uh, accommodate these changes and, more, and, and even our desire for those changes. But people probably more like where we are today, we are less probably happier to keep changing and adopting new platforms, let's say. Yeah, but, that, but those people younger than us, they are on the mobile all the time and they are in multiple platforms and networking and they call all these people their friends. Yes. In the past, we used to have two friends. Well, you're a lucky person. I only had one. <laughs> so now, now we have like thousands or hundreds of thousands. Now we're becoming influencers, you know. So it's, it's a completely different world. That, that's really interesting because I, 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 I'm of a certain age where I, I don't understand or don't even know. I know what the word TikTok means. It's the clock, isn't it? It goes tick. Talk, talk. Exactly. That's it. That keep 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 along those lines. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, I'll be ticking my head in that. But you're saying to me that people can find jobs on TikTok and advance well, their they, career. They are, at least they're announcing. I mean, if you if you, today you publish a short uh, story or reels on an Instagram, for example, and you, and you publish across different platforms. I watched one another day about someone outside. Um, in London, somewhere, all dressed up in 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 a in a suit, but that's what they are doing. They're driving. It's about attention. It's the attention economy. You know, attention is the most, uh, let's say, uh, sought after commodity in today's world. Yeah, we, we're living in a surplus of content out there, and so it, and yeah. and then and then you need to go where the network is open. So some of these platforms are always looking at new let's say, ways of engaging people. And when something new starts, they actually have a, a high organic traffic that is built into that, let's say, uh, new tool. And then a lot of people, those people jump straight in and then get a lot of viewers immediately. And that's how they're driving and grabbing attention. And that is what network is about today. And then you need to have a networking driving attention with an intention it has to be intentional right so cultivating a robust professional network is key for building resilience also and 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 the more the, the stronger your network i think the more likely you'll be resilient in where you are and also developing your career so i don't know if it was jim Rohn who said or i think probably tony robbins one of those guys says uh, your net worth is within your network. Wow. Right? So that, that's so prophetic. Bringing bring in, bring into resilience, I think your resilience also lies in building that robust professional network around you, understanding the trends, understanding how to work with these new networking, online networking tools, having an intention, you know, becoming a publishing house, a media house, your personal brand. I think we, we discussed a little bit about personal branding, correct? Yeah, we, we will later on. We'll come on to that. But let me just no, no, stop you. Before, before we start recording, oh, we're yes, talking we about did. that. Yeah. So, so we, we're going to bring that later on. This is interesting to me in, in one way, because when you say you have to become a publishing house or you have to become a publisher, just, just explain that one a little bit for somebody who who like me may not understand when you tell me you have to become a publisher. What's that mean? Well, you, you will build your personal life, your presence. And I think gone are the days that people go on Facebook and, and say, I'm drinking coffee right now because who cares what you're doing, right? Yeah. And now you're more engaging with the product or with products, you engage with a skill, you engage with groups and communities. You are uh, you show interest in in what people are doing uh, overall, and there is an engagement in terms of stories or or a solution, or there are questions and answers. So, for example, Quora is an amazing platform for questions and answers, and I know people build their professional, let's say, build their reputation professionally by answering a lot of key questions. You become uh, an expert by answering tons of questions. And I mean, you know, LinkedIn offers to keep answering trends and questions that are showing up. So 
in that way, you are a publisher. You're uh, demonstrating your skills yeah. by publishing, by writing, you know, by showing up, you know, and uh, commenting and with, with, with very clever, intelligent comments. And not only, oh, that's cool, right? Yes. Uh, yes. And, and now you need to understand that you are now a publisher. You are publishing how you have different uh, channels now as a person, not only as a company. That, that's really interesting. And I think that that's key, you know, coming back to the idea of career resilience, where um, if you, you grab hold of the idea that, that if I jump onto to LinkedIn or I jump onto Quora and I say, um, I look at Andy, Andy Lima, let's see who Andy Lima is. I can have right in front of me a list of all the questions that you've answered and then I can look at it and I can see, oh, well, it's been upvoted several times. So a lot of people are giving this person called Andy um, kudos. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the more people that, that, that give you kudos, the more that you write, the more that you show your knowledge, suddenly um, you become more valuable. I guess that's what you're saying. So yeah, I mean, you build your, your career cloud, your professional cloud. That is very important, right? That is key moving on to the future, I believe. And, and that is part of your career resilience. Uh, Johnson, uh, we're going to stop here right now. We're going to have a second part of this uh, career episode. We're going to be talking more about personal branding, looking to the future, career manager, management. So guys, Thank you for watching. We're going to come with a second part uh, soon. And um, I would like to invite you to um, subscribe to our channel, like, comment, share, send uh, your thoughts about career resilience or an experience, a testimony or something that can reach our community. Thank you very much. Okay. Speak soon. Speak soon, Andy.